climbing, climbing till I make it to the top, climbing, climbing till I make it to the top, climbing, climbing till I make it to the top. I'm slaying these giants like David facing Goliath. You throwing stones, all I need is one shot. Below ground zero in the valley of death Trying to dig my way out at rock bottom Feeling enemy minded cause the devil had me blinded And I couldn't hear the voice of God calling Before I got saved, see my dreams manifest So I had to go forward cause quitting ain't an option Sending me a slave praying God will make a way for strength to walk away I could see how it was toxic Through the process my ex finally left depressed Walking the edge until I fell off falling Two homies OD'd, another took his life Plus my mama just died to add to all my problems Hopeless cause I'm homeless Trying to stay sober but pretending life ain't tough But I ain't gave up, found that I fell down, consenting is fatal, but was minutes to by angels and got right back up. Back got, up. Got, got real ghosts, it's silly get in order. Married a godly woman, but I barely can support her. Last year we had a daughter, no longer battle depression. Now I'm counting all my blessings, but it's really getting harder. Lost count of the amount of stress. Hey, what's good? It's your boy 2P, aka the People's Preacher, and you tune into the AV podcast. And tonight we got a special edition of the Tacos Taco Tuesday. No, 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 not Taco Tuesday. Uh, Topical Tuesdays in full effect. I thought I'd bring on my brother from another mother. You're going to hear from him in just a minute. But we want to give a quick shout out to all those people that continue to support the podcast, ask about the podcast. Big shout out to my brother, God's Crow. He came in last week, dropped his testimony, talked about evangelism, talked about uh, going to the park and he's casting out demons out of people and, and baptizing people and just being called by God. And, and he said this, he said, the Bible says to go ye, not stay ye. And so we talked about being in the local church, being effective in the local church, but going outside of the, of the four walls and to the world and making disciples, preaching the word, casting out demons, laying hands on the sick. So tonight, Taco Tuesdays, Topical Tuesdays, Tortilla Tuesdays, however you want to call it Tuesdays, is in full effect. So this next brother, I want to give him a proper... I want to give the brother a proper introduction. So this is my brother. He's a man of God, child of God. He's a husband. He's a father. He's a worship leader. He's a teacher, a preacher, an evangelist. He's a brother to the brotherless. He's a friend to the friendless. He's my brother. Uh, uh, we also go to the same church. Big shout out to Firehouse Brea. Amen. Um, all the brothers and sisters at Firehouse Spray, this one's for you. So with no further ado, let me bring on my brother from another mother. Give it up for Brother OB. What's good, Come fam? On. How you doing? It's going good. Uh, uh, super excited to be here, man. Uh, when As soon as you told me about this podcast, dude, I was pumped and stoked as soon as we finished, which we're going to get into later. After I finished preaching, you go, we going to we doing a podcast on this. And I said... Oh, yeah, baby, it's going down, you know. Uh, so super excited to be here, super stoked. Uh, so, yeah, I'm really excited. Way to get into it. Hey, man, before we go any further, I know that, uh, you know, uh, the world has its, um, its way of handling business. And when times, when rough times t- come and good times and bad times, and especially the times we live in right now, everyone is looking for an avenue. Everyone's looking for an answers. Everyone's looking for hope. And they don't know how to go about finding that hope. But we have a hope and we have a source of strength. And um, when times get rough, you know, some people, well, we'll get into that too. They go to other things to get answers and they go to other things to to get uh, peace and joy. But we know the word of God is our foundation. It is our source of strength, our source of wisdom. And I like to call it my go-tos because in the time of trials, you can go to Facebook, nah. You can go to Instagram, let you down. You can go to your cousins, your brothers, your uncles, your co-workers. And no one will be able to give you what God's word will give you. So I call it my go-tos. And I know you got yourself a go-to. So go ahead and share this episodes of go-to. Come on, my go-to verse. And it's always been my verse uh, since I started. And we're going to get into my testimony and later on. But it's always been my verse throughout my testimony, and it's always been my verse when I felt tired, when I felt weary, uh, when I had something I needed, when I needed to to grip something, and uh, the Lord always pointing me back to this verse, and it's Isaiah forty verse uh, thirty one. It says, "Yet those who wait on the Lord will regain will gain new strength; 
They will mount up on wings like eagles and they will run and not get tired and they will walk and not become weary. Don't let the things of this world uh, uh, dictate what's going to happen to your life. Don't let them uh, dictate anything because the Lord who sits on the throne, the sovereign Lord who is worthy and holy and worthy of praise, he's the one who adjusts your life. He's the one who says what to do, when to do it. He's the one who puts the puzzle together. He's the master, and we are called his craftsmanship. So understand that the Lord, he has everything in the palm of his hand. And when in times of trial and in times of need, always make sure to look to the Lord one and also wait upon him because he will renew your strength. They will mount upon wings like eagles and they will soar. They will walk and not get weary. They will run and not faint. So remember that that this walk with the Lord is not a, a, a it's not a sprint. It's not something that's very quick. This is a marathon. So understand that and always wait upon the Lord in times of need and times of weariness as well. Come Ooh, on. come on. We we I I I, for, I, I gotta watch out with you because you was a preacher. <laughs> and they said the come worst on. thing you could do is give a preacher a pulpit, a mic, come or on. a couple hey, can you talk for a few minutes? You know we lying when we say yeah. Come yeah, on. I'll, I'll, just make it brief and we're like Shh. Okay, but we lying because we ain't going to be brief. Ain't no brief. Come Amen. on. Amen. So talk to us a little bit about who you are. I know uh, I met you about a year ago there at Firehouse yeah. Brea. Um, right away, man, I was like, man, this dude has got the goods, man. This guy, I, 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 when you were on worship, and um, I'm like, how come they don't let that dude sing more? That guy needs to sing more. That guy needs to pray. And, and God will give you your moments, bro. And, and I, I just want to say I'm blessed to know you. I'm I, 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 I tell people, you know, like uh, when you meet men in the ministry that got a passion for God and not a passion for ministry, but a passion for God and a passion to do things for God and, and not be ashamed and, 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 and not be quiet. There's men like you, man. So I appreciate you. I love you, man. And tonight I want to I want to uh, share a little bit about who you are. I know you was a PK. I know you grew yeah. up in the ministry um i know uh you uh you you came a long way man you have you have a testimony to to uh to share with us so talk to us a little bit about who obadiah is man well well sorry it kind of starts off with my my parents and my grandparents and things like that firehouse church uh i'm wearing the shirt right now come out firehouse church mm. that's a uh, fire, firehouse <laughs> model come on uh, but uh started off back when my grandpa and grandma they went to church uh, actually to uh, Pastor Fernando's church, which is the, ch the church we currently go to. And then my, my dad got discipled by Pastor Fernando. And now along the lineage, I am, I'm here now. Mm. So when I was born, uh, I, we're, we're at Pretty Chapel Fullerton, which is now called Firehouse. And we got sent out to, uh, to Corona, uh, now, formerly called PCIE. Uh, basically what was happening is that we couldn't afford to be there anymore. So the church folded down and we said, you know, we're going to go back to the mother church. We go back to the mother church, I believe for a few months. Then we get sent out again to Norwalk and we're there for a full decade so ooh, for, ooh, for 10 ooh. years, which is awesome. Come on, Norwalk, we represent it out here. Come on. Mm. So <laughs> so we're out in Norwalk for a full 10 years from, uh, from when I was nine years old, 2009, all the way up to 2020. So about 10, 10 and a half years. COVID hit, our leadership slowly pulled out. God was literally dismantling our, in a good way, don't think that was a bad thing, but the Lord was pulling our leadership and uh, and um, my mom and dad had their 25th anniversary. And during that time, let me break this down. During this time, I was nine years old when we first went out to Norwalk. Uh, I started playing drums when I was about nine to 10 years old. I got on the worship team at 12 years old and I was playing drums for the worship team from 12 all the way up to 20. So for more than half my life, it was I was already ministry, ministry, ministry. And so during that time, check this out, guys. This is this is why going to church doesn't make you a Christian. A PK doesn't make you a Christian. Uh, your your parents' salvation doesn't mean that you have salvation. That does not mean any of that. Uh, you know that you need to get your own salvation with the Lord, and he'll freely give it to you. So I'm in this worship team. And I'm fornicating on this worship team. I'm 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 not drinking. I'm doing uh, weed. I'm smoking weed on this worship team and uh, just hanging out with the bad people, with these bad people. 
And uh, this wasn't a good influence. So I was doing all these things. I started uh, uh, dating, you know, in the high school scene. I even got with the woman in church, and I was fornicating her, for fornicating her with her in the church while I was on the worship team. And uh, um, and so, so that was all between when I was twelve. I started, you know, doing all that stuff when I was about fourteen, and then all the way through high school that was happening, and then um, all the way through high school, and then after high school. Uh, um, uh, I was with this girl in the church. That's when I was fornicating with her. And then uh, after that, uh, that's when the whole COVID thing came in. So when the whole COVID thing came in, people were leaving. People said, "Oh, like uh, we could, we can't go to church, even though they could have, they could stand in line at Walmart for I don't even know thirty minutes or whatever, and church isn't even that long, but whatever." And and so people would go, "Oh, we couldn't go because of COVID and all these things." So my dad was praying about it. He was fasting about it. And my dad said, I think it's time for us to shut down the church. And my mom said, well, I, I don't think so. I don't know. Like, you know, but when the Lord pours out his spirit upon the family, he does it first on the man. So my dad was like, no, I've been praying. I've been fasting. I really think we should shut down the church and go back to the firehouse. So during this time of COVID, I, uh, Pray Chapel of Norwalk was hurting. Firehouse was hurting. And we just came together and just exploded. Now, that was the beginning of 2021. And since then, I was still half-stepping. You got to understand, mm. I was still half-stepping. I was playing church, and that's why I'm so hard on the half-stepping Christian because I am, I was the half-stepping Christian. I was the one who was who would live a completely different lifestyle while on the worship team. Don't don't forget that. I was on the worship team doing this half-in, half-out, and, and there was times where I would literally see revival happening when I was doing in and out of church and I would see revival happening and I would just let it pass me by. I would see the, the move of God from behind the drum set and I would still let it pass me by. I would literally just be sitting and feeling the presence of God and saying no to the Holy Spirit. I'm not going to repent. Literally saying to telling the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to repent because this I'm covered by grace and this and that. Mm. But anyway, we'll get, we're going to get into that in, a, in later on because that's some heavy, heavy stuff. But uh, I was always that. I was always doing that. So 2021 happens. I'm still with this woman that I'm fornicating with. I go back to church. I go to firehouse. We combined. And uh, that's when I started saying, okay, Lord, you know, like I'm, I'm going to be taking you seriously. And it was like a gradual thing that was going ha happening. But I was still with this woman. And I was still fornicating with this woman. And uh, the prophet, Javier Gaitan, he came down. He's our, he's our church prophet. And he came down. He goes, listen, I see this beautiful woman. OK, and he goes, I see this beautiful woman and uh, uh, and he goes, I see this beautiful woman and I start crying. And he goes, listen, this is the bar that you have it on. You need to raise your bar because he's and he literally tells me what, exactly what I'm thinking during this time of prophecy. And he goes, listen, she does this. She checks off all your standards, but your standards need to be raised. And I go, oh, snap, you know, oh snap. You know, so I go over to this woman and I say, hey, I don't think uh, uh, this is going to work out. But instead, she said, oh, you're settling in school. You're settling in this kind of brushing it under the carpet. And I said, no, dude, like this is this is what the Lord told me. And at the time, again, I was still half stepping because I still wanted to do this, still wanted to do that. And uh, she goes, no, like this isn't it. Like that's not what you're, you're settling for. And I go, listen, this is the only place I'm settling at. Like and marriage isn't a bad thing because I wanted to marry her. Right. And so I go, marriage isn't a bad thing. I want to settle here, this and that. Uh, but 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 he said, don't settle. And so we ended up shoving it under the carpet, still together from Jan. That was in January, all the way up till May, I believe. And uh, and but the Lord told me one time through Brother Javier, he said he said, you know, you need to raise your standards. I'm going to San Francisco to go pick up some drum equipment, and I'm listening to worship. And I said, Lord, speak to me, whatever you want, just speak to me. And he literally tells me clear as day, as if someone was sitting right next to me, and he said, she is not the one for you. And I go, and I go, and I'm crying, and I go, oh, that's just the back of my voice. In the presence of the Lord, okay, this is how numb I was to the Holy Spirit, seeing revival passing by, seeing the Holy Spirit move, and this and that. This is how numb I was to the Holy Spirit, saying, no, nah, it's not the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit told me she's not the one for you, and I told him, I told the Holy Spirit, no, like, no. Then I'm driving some more, and I'm like, so kind of soaking in the present, he, and she, he literally goes, she's not the one for you, twice. Mm, come on I go, oh my lord and so i'm crying and you know what you know what happened but you know what happened brother david i go back tell home. me what happened I go, I go back home and i tell my dad i say listen i'm gonna go get that ring 
Ooh. Uh, for this woman that the Lord told me she's not the one for you. My God. I'm going to give her this ring. And my dad goes, okay, listen. The Lord has been telling me be to, to be quiet. Literally, he tells me, the Lord has been telling me to be quiet and not say anything until this moment. And I need to tell you a few things. Boom, 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 boom. And there were all big things that I already knew. But since the Lord touched me already, mm. I was more open to, to hear what my dad had to say. And so I'm like, oh, my Lord. I go, okay. Okay, Lord. So when she, because she was out, uh, she was actually out uh, at Lake Tahoe because she was going to go, um, Hang out with some family. I was actually, dude, check this out. I was actually supposed to go. I paid my down payment, deposit, everything. But my mom said, no, I don't want you going. But it was actually the Lord saying, I don't want mm. you going. Come on. All and right. so I don't go. Come on. So I don't go. She comes back and I say, hey, we need to break up. And she goes, what? I'm like, no, I love her. I go, no, listen, this is what the Lord is saying. And she tried using like the, the because one of our prophetess, she came down and she said, well, I could see that happening, like me marrying her. And she goes, well, what about like what are the what about the prophetess? Like she said this, and I go, listen, I'm holding on to what the Lord told me. The Lord told me this. The Lord told me that. Four times I got confirmation from my this, from that, blah blah blah. And she goes, she goes, oh no. So she, we're there for like four hours, Dave, like Dang. talking. But she just won't let go because there was a soul tie there, and you don't want to get into that. Ooh. And so maybe for another time. And so we had a soul tie there, but I already broke it off because I, I repented. I said, Lord, like. Take this away from me. Yeah. But uh, um, so we end up breaking up and I go through this stage of this is 2021. OK, we're in May of 2021. And I go, OK, Lord, like, when's the next one? I literally told the Lord, where's the next woman? Because I was always uh, always that was my whole thing. And you're going to see this throughout my whole testimony is that it was always women. That was like my my uh, uh, thorn in my flesh mm. was women. And so I told the Lord, okay, where's the next one? If that's not the one, she checked off all the boxes. She went to church. She was in the kids' church. She was worshiping. She cried. And she was all this stuff at the altar. She cried at the altar. Which that Anyway, so anyway, I don't even want to get into that. But I go, she checks off all the boxes. Where's the next one? Lord didn't say anything to me. And I go, okay, Lord. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. This was a few months later. I'll wait for you. I'll wait. I'll wait. But as long as I don't end up like Paul. As mm. long as I don't want to sell a bit like Paul and then nothing. Come on, come on. And I go, oh, like, Lord, like, and so this was about a few months. Now, this was in about, so May, June, July, August. Uh, so this was, so we ended in May. This was about in a few months. So May, June, July, end of July happens, going into August. And I say, all right, Lord, if you want me to be like Paul, I'll be like Paul. Mm. If you want to the highways and the byways, I'll be like Paul. If you want me to go across the nation, I'll be like Paul. If you want me to go to Southern America, South America, if you want me to go to Nicaragua, if you want me to go to the Philippines, if wherever you want to send me, Lord, just send me. Mm, because now, now I have this emptiness and I cannot be filled except by you. And so as soon as I laid it down, I said, Lord, just take care of it because I don't want to be taking care of it anymore. And I can't even, that's why it says in, in, um, in, in Joshua, he says, listen, the battle doesn't belong to you. Ooh, it belongs to you. Come on. I gave it back to the Lord because that battle didn't even belong to me. Literally, that was in July. Okay. That was in July. Meanwhile, this woman is still at our church, right? That was in July. August 22nd. That was in July. Okay. I meet my wife on TikTok. This is so crazy. I see her on my For You page. And if you don't know what that is, it's basically like an explore page, like Anybody could be on there. So what are the chances of me seeing my wife on your, this for you page? Your current wife. My current wife now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I see her. It wasn't, ten, go, hey. it wasn't Tinder, right? It was TikTok. No, it was TikTok. Okay, it was okay, TikTok. Okay, 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 okay. And she was actually preaching on TikTok. Mm. She was preaching. And so I go, I go, and she had this this ministry. Shout out to Jane A Ministries. Uh, they actually, they're kind of like one of the stepping stones that, that got me and my wife together. And she had this ministry that that has has known my family forever. And I go, what do you know about about that ministry? They've known me since I was a car I was in a carrier. They've known me since then. They see me grow. And she, we go text, we're texting back and forth in her comment section. And listen, she had fifty thousand followers in her comment section. In her comment section, she had a, at least a thousand a thousand comments. So she's texting me out of all these people. And we're going back and forth. She ends up leaving me on red. I go, okay, like, whatever. It's fine. I'm never going <laughs> to see this woman anyway. Fast forward to August 22nd. 
Jane A Ministries, which have the same shirt, the one who's known me forever, they come to my church, and guess who comes along? My Ooh, wife. Come on. And so I see my wife, and I said, "Do I know you from somewhere?" And she goes, "No, like I just have a familiar face." I go, "Nah, you make TikToks, huh?" And she goes, "Oh, snap!" I'm like, "Yeah, I do." We talk. She, I get her Instagram. I send her all because we all go to our young adult director's uh, apartment at that time. And we're all hanging out, having a good time. And uh, she she ends up DMing me saying, hey, send me everybody's info. I send everybody's info. And since then, we've just been talking about the Lord. Wow. Since then, like, like I go out. We went out like first day. And we're talking about our testimonies, where God has us right now. And it was just amazing. And then two, three weeks go by and go, hey, what's your last name? Hey, what's your favorite color? Hey, what's this? What's that? Started asking the shallow questions two weeks into our mm. our, our, our talking. Hey, I don't even know so, my wife's uh, favorite color. I've been with her 14 years. Oh, my Lord. But I know where the Come rents on. do on the first. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, go ahead, go ahead. But, but so so check this out. We get to we talk. We started. We met on August 22nd. We get together September 22nd. OK, listen to these twos here. Okay, because two in the Bible means unity. Okay, okay. okay. So, we get, so I meet her the 22nd, get together the 22nd. Okay, time goes by. We're already talking about marriage. So this is September, October, we're already talking about marriage. And so October, November, December, we get together. We I engage, ask my question. I, I, I get engaged to her um, February 12th, and we get married February 22nd. So we get married on 2-22-22. And at the time, we just thought, oh, that's a cute number. But but we're actually that like, we were digging through the Bible. We're talking and fellowshipping, and then uh, with with some people, and they go, don't you know that the number two in Bible means unity mm. and power? Come on. And I go, what? And she goes, she goes, why do you think that that, that Jesus sent the disciples out in twos? Come on, come on. And I'm like, what? And so and so, but since then, me and my wife, uh, uh, we've been awesome. We've been doing great. Um, and since then, it's all been history, but it was because I surrendered to the Lord and I said, Lord, you can take whatever you want. But since then, uh, I got on fire for the Lord truly in that, in that season where I was like, Lord, you could take whatever you want from me back in that June, July of 2021. Now, listen, I was in church since, since I was born. Mm. I was in church since I was born. I didn't give my life fully to Christ. And I did the sinner's prayer. I did all this, but the sinner prayer don't really make you saved. Unless you start flipping, flipping your life. If you if you say the prayer and you keep living a certain lifestyle willfully, it says in Hebrews that the that that that, that the sacrifice no long, longer covers your sin mm. because you know the truth. Oh my Lord! Come because on. you know the truth. I'm about to get down right now because you know the truth, but yet still, still you are still sinning willfully. Come on. So I was sinning willfully. I was I, I did the sinner's prayer. I was doing all this these things. Um, uh, but I didn't give my life fully to the Lord and I call it safe saved because I didn't give my life fully to the Lord until June of 2021. And I just been on fire for the Lord ever since. And, uh, and a lot of people are saying it's a honeymoon phase or a lot of people say it's mm. a honeymoon phase for the Lord, but I'm not seeing it fizzle out. I'm not seeing it fizzle out. I'm not seeing it like, you know, after a while you kind of see on. it decay. I'm not seeing it decay so far. So, uh, uh, Lord, Lord's been with me and I'm, and I'm super grateful for the Lord. Uh, as of right now, uh, I have a child, uh, she's four years old. Her name, her name's Leilani. My wife's name is Sab. Uh, you can follow her on TikTok on I'm Sabs. No, I'm just kidding. But, uh, but, hey, you, got, um, hey, you got to shout out the wifey, man. You got to shout, shout out, out the, the wife. wife. And unfortunately she should, she couldn't be here. Uh, uh, we had some family come in and so, uh, she's hanging out with them, but this podcast had to be done because the word of the Lord must go forward. Question for um, you, so, my brother. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Uh, so yeah, that's that's pretty much it. I have a daughter. She's four years old. Uh, uh, she's been a a test in my life, and so uh, she's awesome though, awesome little family, and um, yeah, awesome. This this is where I'm at right now. Hey man, one of the things that I loved about uh, you sharing right now is that you never used your father, the ministry, and the pressures of the ministry. To say that's why I did what I did and that's what I did what I do. You were you took it you took uh, you say you know what I didn't want God. I I uh, take us back you, you know uh, you know for for a lot of PKs you know uh, uh, I'm not a PK but I've been in church all my life too you know so I know like I 
I remember going to church when I was a kid with my family and, and you know, uh, when you're a kid, you know, like you don't know, you don't have a, 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 a you don't have like a, your own salvation. You know, you kind of write in the tales of your parents when you're little. And uh, for you, mm-hmm. you know, what advice could you give or what can you share with people that, that, that are church kids? Um, mm-hmm. What are some of the things you could share with them that maybe can encourage them or provoke them to, you know, like, I don't know, like, there's a lot of church kids that I feel like they're stuck and they don't know, uh, they're battling the world and they're, they they want God, but, you know, what... What, what what could you what could you say to them? What what kind of words of encouragement could you give them at this moment? And, and I'm still dealing with some people who are who are in church, uh, and uh, there's certain people who are have been in church, and I see it. They don't want to say it, but I see them wanting that what the world has to offer. Mm. I, but I also know because it says it says uh, uh, that's why it says uh, in the word. It says raise up a child in the way that they should go, and when they get older, they sh- they will never forget. So, so there's a part of them that says, oh, there's a, the, the church is, is it like, this is my salvation. This is it. And there's an other side that says, I want to see what the world has to offer. Mm. And there's a song that says, it says, I, oh, it's graves into gardens. And the opening verse says, I've searched the world, but it could have filled me. Mm. It could not fill me. And so it's like those, the things that you're looking for fulfillment in, Nothing can fill it but the Lord, mm. and I think I think I was trying to find something because because during that time I uh, my senior year I ended up busting my knee and uh, my whole world crumbled. That what well, my form of worldliness or my whole world, uh, what it happened is that everything just crumbled down my senior year, and that's when I looked at the Lord. I said, Lord, ain't no ain't nothing in the world, and I started smoking, doing all these things, and then I ended up my knee busted again in college, and I ended up saying, Lord. There's nothing in the world that can fill, fill me like you can. That's why it says I have tasted and seen the goodness of the world of the Lord, meaning that I've seen what's out there, and there's nothing that can fill me because I've tasted and seen the glo- the, the goodness of the, of God. So my my word of encouragement is that don't think that there's something out there that will fill you, because nothing out there will fill you the way Jesus can. Nothing can fill you the way God can. No one can provide for you the way Jehovah Jireh can. No one can give you peace the way Jehovah Shalom can. Come on. No one can be your your banner the way uh, uh, the way that Jesus is. No one can be the banner the way Jehovah Nisi is. Mm. No one can be your shepherd like 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 Jesus can. So listen, for all my PKs out there, don't think that just because you're living your life the way you want to live, and your parents are in there doing church preaching the gospel, touching people's lives, people are being healed, demons are being cast out, and you're, you're sitting there and nothing is happening. You know why? It's because you have a, a spirit of, of satisfaction, a spirit of mm. settlement. That says, I can do this. I'm okay where I am at right now because I'm in the church, but yet I'm still sitting willfully and I'm fine. But let me tell you, this is what I didn't hear and so I found out for myself that if you go on sinning willfully, and I was talking about it earlier, that if you go on sinning willfully, that the blood of Christ no longer covers your sin because you know the truth, but yet still you're going out sin- sinning willfully. Mm. If I would have heard that when I was uh, a PK, well, still, I'm still a PK, <laughs> but if I would have heard that when I was backsliding, mm. if I would have heard that when I was out smoking weed, if I would have heard that when I was out fornicating, instantaneously I would have been like, oh, snap, if I die right now, I know exactly where I'm going. I'm going to hell. You know why? Because I was sitting willfully. I said, oh, Lord, it's okay. I'll, I'll repent next week. I'll repent on Sunday when my dad says, everyone, bow your head, close your eyes, repeat after me. Uh, I'll, I'll just repent then, and, and I'll be fine. But what the Lord says and what the Bible says, it says, if you go on sinning willfully, that the blood of Christ no longer covers your sin, there's no more blood for you. Mm. Oh my lord, that is scary. That is scary. That there's no more blood for you. You your blood is all gone. The blood of Christ is all gone. That is scary. That is scary to know that that oh my lord, like no longer am I covered by Jesus. Mm, because I'm willfully. So that's my word of encouragement, backslash uh uh reality check. Because a lot of Christians believe, or a lot of sorry, not Christians, but Christians as well. PKs believe that just because my papa saved, just because my grandpa saved, 
I'm saved as well. I fall under the covering. But buddy, there comes a there comes an age of accountability because we think about little babies, right? That when they pass away, hashtag unborn lives matter. Come on, Woo. see, show that shark. Come on, and so, come on, come on, <laughs> and so, so when a baby passes away, or people that don't have an account, or little children that don't have an accountability, they go they go to heaven because it's like there's no like. Lord, here I am, Lord, take me. There's no accountability because they're so young. But once you reach a certain age, and I believe, I tr- I believe personally that that age is about 12, 13, and 14, about, actually, I- I'll be honest, about 10 years old when you say, Lord, here I am, I'm yours. I repent of my sin, and I'm following Christ. There, co- be, there becomes an age of accountability. Mm. And so uh, uh, once you reach that age, now you are accountable for what you do. You are accountable for what you say. You are now accountable because now you even think about the Bible times. The Bible times, what happened when you, when you were a child, you became 13 and you're a man. Oh, my Lord. You were 13 and you became a man. So now you are accountable for, for your own prov- uh, providing for yourself, providing for whatever else you had. Now there's an accountability that you're facing. And that's why it says in the word, it says that you are going to be standing before the Lord one day and you're going to be given an account for everything you've done, everything you've said, everything you are, that you have done previously. You're going to be held in account for that, but not only for the bad things, but also for the good things. So, so my, my, my word of encouragement and reality check is saying, man, there, there's a gospel out there. And you got to read it. There's a New Testament, and there's a book called Hebrews, and there's a book called Romans, and you need to read it because it'll get your get your get your flesh in check. Oh, I'll make sure I do that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> yeah, amen. And uh, um, one of the things that I like what you just said again is that you know sometimes in the church we play we play with grace, we play with grace, and we know because we yeah. think we know, so we can yeah. play that line, but like. What I tell people is you can play around and get away with it. Mm-hmm. But what about happens like you where we were talking is when you, if you die that day in that sin. Yeah. So, you know, we don't want to take advantage of the grace of God. Uh, yeah. You're not playing nobody. You're not fooling nobody. You're, you're, yeah. you're uh, hey, amen. So the only, oh, real quick, the only person you're fooling is yourself. Ooh, the come only on. person you're fooling is yourself because that's why it says Paul wrote, he goes, am I now to abuse the law of grace now that we are under a new law? And he literally says, far from it, meaning mm. that I am not to, about to abuse God. I'm not to, about to abuse his grace. I'm not about to abuse his mercy. I'm not about to abuse everything that he has given me just because I want to live the way I want to live. Mm. So I, I want to say that because uh, you're saying that and we could bounce on. I know we've been in church and we're just talking, talking, talking. And, and our kids are like, well, oh, we're going to leave. We're going to leave. You know, and so I understand. Come on. No, but, you know, that's the thing, too, is that, that uh, I think we're in a time and a place where God is is requiring He's yeah. commanding us to like stop the nonsense, stop yes. the well. We're gonna get into that. It's gonna be so good. We go stop dibbling, oh. dabbling, uh, half stepping. Either you're in or you're out. And so, I think at this point that 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 people need to understand is like I tell people I feel like we like in the seventh inning. We're like in the eighth yeah. inning of life, and um and it's and it, and, and um and it ain't, it ain't getting the good. With all due respect, it ain't gonna get. We're not gonna make America great again. Things oh are gonna God. get worse. When things happen, when laws are passed, um, when uh, people get um, put into power, we have mm-hmm. to understand it shouldn't take us by. Uh, it shouldn't hit us like, oh my God! It shouldn't surprise yeah. us. It's just knowing it's the sign of the time, and God is looking for a people that are willing to se- be separated, to be sanctified, oh to be called out. To stop Whoa. playing games, to stop fornicating, oh, and so tonight, yeah. as we get into the meat and and the, we talked, we, we got into the potatoes, but now mm. we're going to get into the meat of it all. So this is Topical Tuesdays, and it's in full effect. And you know, I had to bring my brother in, and so this wasn't a good idea because <laughs> it, it wasn't an idea. 
you know, my Taco Tuesdays, my typical topical, whatever. You were supposed to come in under worship. Mm -hmm. And it just never happened. And then one day at, at church, you begin to pray and you begin to preach about open doors. Mm. And I don't know if uh, we're we going to ruffle some feathers. Yeah, that's we okay. Are. We're going to yeah. provoke under good works. We're going to uh -huh. encourage. We're going to tell the truth and shame the devil. We're going to expose the devil. And some of the things that I really feel like we're not the only one talking about it. But there's a lot of things going on that people just don't understand because they're ignorant. And after tonight, they're not going to have an excuse because we're going to we're going to we're going to be exposing the enemy. And the, and this is what they're going to say. Oh, man, they just doing too much. All those fanatics, those Jesus freaks, they against everything. But you know yeah. what? We're going to do what we do tonight because we love people. Come on. We love God's word. We love God's promises. I like to see people healed. I like to see people get set free. Yeah. I like to see brothers walk in the peace of God, the joy of God, the grace of God. I, wa yeah. I want to see my peoples walk in victory. And so tonight the topic is open doors. We're going to talk about what open doors are and we're going to identify some things. So I'm probably going to turn it over to you a little bit. At the message uh, that you um, you gave really uh, sparked a conversation. What is open doors, and how as Christians we can open the door to satan uh, satanic um, activities, not knowing, and really just telling the devil, "Come on in." Wow! Talk to me, man. Talk to me about open doors. Oh. Come on. So my open door story, man, I have some notes right here. And then I have uh, um, this some notes I have right here from my open door sermon. And the main scripture I was using was Matthew chapter 6, verses 22 through 24. It says, your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, well, we got a lot of unhealthy eyes. It says, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light that you think is actually darkness, oh, how deep that darkness goes. And I was using King Saul and I used Jonah, but I want to kind of sit on King Saul for a little bit. But what happened, What was happening with King Saul back in, 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 in uh, 1 Samuel is that this is when David was already anointed. This is when uh, the kingdom of, the, of Israel was already stripped from King Saul and the Lord sent a spirit of wickedness upon King Saul. Basically, he was dealing with demons. And so he was dealing with demons. And so he tried to inquire of the Lord. So what he was trying to do was saying, Lord, I can't even rest because this demon is tormenting me. I can't even worship because this demon is tormenting me. But in reality, it wasn't even God's fault. It was his fault. But anyway, we're not going to get into that. So King Saul is inquiring of the Lord. and But since he couldn't get a hold of the Lord, what does he do? He goes... And he goes and finds a witch and he says, listen, I need you to bring back the prophet Samuel. Prophet Samuel already passed away in a few chapters earlier. So King Saul says, I need you to bring back prophet Samuel. And so the witch says, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll make a puppet. And literally it says, I'll make a puppet because I've done it before. And I'm going to do all these things. And I'm gonna, it's going to be a form of Samuel, but it's not really going to be Samuel. So the witch does her his thing, and the, and Samuel ends up coming back, but it was actually Samuel. It wasn't this false this false thing that the witch had done before. It was actually Samuel. And Samuel looks at King Saul and says, what are you doing, basically? And Saul goes, well, I want to find out. I want to find out what's happening. What's going to happen in, in this war that I'm going to go in the Philistines with? And Samuel literally looks at King Saul and says, you, you're, you're going to die. Your sons, gonna, your sons are going to die, and your inheritance is going to die. And Saul goes, and that's not the message he wanted to hear, right? And so what happens at time to time is that sometimes we're trying to inquire of the supernatural. We're trying to inquire of the Lord, but the Lord's not speaking to us. because. And I think about in, uh, uh, in Acts where it says Simon, uh, Simon the sorcerer, well, he follows Philip, he follows Philip for all these days, and finally meets Peter and John about the power of the, to see the power of the Holy Spirit. And Simon throws money at Peter and John and says, listen, I need that same power. And Peter looks at Simon the sorcerer and says, 
you will never receive this power because your heart is full of iniquity and bitterness. Mm. And so our heart needs to be yearning after the Lord, but I don't want to come off subject. But when we inquire of the Lord and he's not, he's not speaking to us, we go to something else and we open doors. Mm. We're going to keep you open doors here. We're, he keep, he opened this door of witchcraft because, because the Lord wasn't, wasn't, um, wasn't, uh, uh, uh I'm sorry. He wasn't uh, uh, responding to King Saul. So that was my main message was that, that we can be opening doors. And I wanted to expose the enemy within that sermon saying that the enemy tries to use music. And this is what we're going to talk about this a little bit, a little bit later. Mm. But he tries to use music. He tries to use movies. He tries to use uh, idols. He tries to use all these astrology, crystals, palm reading, uh, tarot card reading. He tries to use these things in order for for you to have an open door that's why it says in ephesians it says do not go to bed upset or do not let the sun go down upset because you're giving the devil a foothold within your life meaning that when you go to sleep angry and it's so it's so easy to go to sleep angry because it's so easy to just flip over on the other side and say yeah whatever mm. and be all me with your wife but what the word says in ephesians says do not go to sleep or do not let the sun go down and you're still angry because you're giving the foothold and uh, you're giving the devil a foothold in your life. So what does that mean? What is he talking about foothold? That means he has gateway into your life. That means that mm. he has now jurisdiction in your life. That's what it means. But it's, that's not the only way he gets in. And we know uh, through through music, through movies, what you see, that's what we just read in Matthew 6, saying that your eye is like a lamp to your body. So what are you taking in? And this is all for my sermon. If you guys want to check it out, we're on Firehouse on YouTube because I don't think we're going to have time because we're going to get into this. Come on. Firehouse YouTube. And and uh, um, and so that was my main, main, main point was that don't think that 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 just because you're covered by the blood that it doesn't – that you're open that, – that just because you're covered by the blood, it doesn't mean that you, you're, you're not able to open doors to the enemy. And I think about I think about how we, how this our church now, and this is all in my sermon. I'm not out of context here because this is this is all from the sermon. How Satan awaits on the other side of the door, mm. and he and you're doing this. Come on, you're doing this. You're like, oh Lord, I'm a, I, I could do this, I could do that, but I'm still covered by the blood of Jesus. I can still do this. I can still fornicate. I can, but I'm, co I, I, I'm covered by the blood. Hey, but I can still, I can still smoke weed. I can still be drunk. But hey, yo, I'm covered. Hey, water. Hey, Jesus turned water into wine, so I can still drink, right? But yeah, I'm covered yeah. by the blood of Jesus. <laughs> and this is what happens: mm. is that when we're doing this with the door, with the open door. This Ooh, is why come I keep on. Doing this. When you keep doing this, one night, one day, the Lord, the enemies is gonna go. I just stop my foot, and he's in. And that's all I need, baby. And listen, this is part of my testimony because I was fornicating, I was smoking weed, but I was still in the church. And I was wondering why I was ad addicted to pornography. I was wondering why I was addicted to this woman. I was wondering why all these things were running rapid in my life. I was wondering why my grades were flunking. I was wondering why, even though I would try hard in my essays, I wouldn't get the grade I wanted. And I was wondering why my life was falling apart in high school. And I said, dude, don't you, I go to church, I do that. But because I gave the enemy leeway, mm. because I opened the door to the enemy and the enemy said, I just need a foothold. I don't even need you to open up the whole door. I just need to get in, get my foot in. And now my de I'm sending my demons after you. Now I'm sending destruction after you because mm. I've come to steal, kill, and destroy. So I, I'm a living testimony of what the enemy has done and his capability and we have to have a healthy respect of satan oh or come, again, oh, come on come on come on and a lot of people either get and this is words of brother david right here a lot of people give the devil too much credit or they don't give him enough credit mm. sometimes uh, we gotta we gotta call it as it is if you're being lazy at work it's because you're being lazy at work the devil ain't got nothing to do with that but when you start getting headaches, when you start praying, and all of a sudden you got a migraine, all of a sudden you've been fine all day, you ate, you drank your coffee, you drank your water, you did everything right, but all of a sudden you start praying, and then you get a headache, now you got to rebuke that, because that's from the enemy. Once you start worshiping, all of a sudden you get perversion mm. thoughts, and that's from the enemy. you got to rebuke that. you got to rebuke mm. that, because that's from the enemy. You need to have discernment. That's what you got to pray for. Ask, and you shall receive. 
So I'm telling you, this was all from the sermon. It was it was amazing time. It yes, was yes. great. I, oh my lord, I love preaching that sermon. I preach it a hundred times because this is what the enemy tries to use. He tries to use all these things, and and he says it's okay, it's okay, it's fine. You're you're in church. The devil goes to church. Mm. The demons believe in God. Come the on. demons believe in Jesus. They believe. I what think makes you so. Good? I think what's happening with a lot of things is the way that that devil packages it. He packages it really nice. Yeah. And so Christians that don't have discernment, that are not filled with the Holy Spirit, that are not in their word, that are not in prayer, that are not spending time with God, they're yes. uh, ex ex accept susceptible? Is that the word? Susceptible. To that yes. stuff. But when a man is in tune with God, he's been spending time with God, he's been spending time in the word, he's been spending time with his brothers in Christ. Yes. When he sees it, he knows it. That. Yes. Oh, I, I, and the thing is, the man who recognizes he's weak is strong. Yes. I think sometimes we come into a place where like, man, I can go to that. I can do that. Yeah. I can watch that. I can go there. Because oh, you know what? Covered by the blood. I got, I know scripture. I've been in church. And I said, man, you're a fool. Yes, you're a fool. You're a fool oh, if you God. think you can play fair on the devil's playground. You, you don't play oh, fair. You you yeah. playing patty cake with the devil, believe me, he got you. And so I think with with the things that we're going to talk about, you know, we talked about we're talking about music and we're talking about movies, all these things, it, it it's not a coincidence. Um, mm. The devil's out there and he's repackaging things. He's he, he's there to deceive, and he's very subtle at times. Mm -hmm. If you the, the, someone once said, the devil's this guy. If you give him an inch, he'll rule your life. Oh my lord! And so you said the foothold. You said just a little, just a little opening door, and I'm there. And what people don't realize is all hell's breaking loose. When you come home, that's your peace right there. That's your refreshing. That's your re uh, rest. That's your re up. When I come home, yeah. I, it, it's a time of just relaxing with my family and just oh restoring. But you walk into some people's house, it's chaos. Wow. And we don't understand that by the TV, by the uh, by the music, uh, by the conversations, yeah. we, we we're allowing the enemy to come in and just do as do as he wills. It's like yeah. I don't walk in, you know, like we. It's like we're allowing the devil to come in. Go ahead and sit on my seat. Go ahead and sit right there where I sit. You can have my control. Oh, you need a, you need something to drink. You want something to eat? No, 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 no. Devil, get the heck out of here in Jesus' mm -hmm. name. And, and so people's like, people are going to say, Brother Obi, it's not that big of a deal. Wow. It's not that big of a deal. Come on, come on. Uh, you know, uh, watching these movies is not that big a deal. Come on, man. Talk to us a little bit about what we were talking about at church on Wednesday and how mm. sometimes the devil, he, a little, he, gets, he, he comes in all uh, forms. Sometimes he's subtle. Sometimes he kind of hides it. Sometimes he's way mm -hmm. out there. Sometimes he's in the back row, but it's all strategy. Yeah. How important? Because okay, so you got married, and you uh, you inherited a blessing, right? Yes. The the, the young lady, she's a blessing. Yes. How important it is for you as a father, as a man of God, to protect that young lady's eyes and ears. What are some of the things that you're noticing? And that you can share with parents that are listening, like, hey, you may not, they may not be realizing, but now you're going to tell them, hey, look out for this, look out for that. Talk to Come me, on. man. Dude, I, I, I believe it all boils down to the intimacy mm. with the Lord. Because I've come to this conclusion that, 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 that you need to be so intimate with the Lord. And I, I thought, and I thought my dad has always, because my dad was a preacher, right? So he would always have these analogies. And one of the analogies, he goes, I don't know if it's true or any or anything, but I really love this analogy that I have that that I was I, I read. He goes, the way people find out fake dollar bills okay. or a banker finds fake dollar bills is that they're in a room full of real money mm. all day, real money, real money, real money, real money. When and as soon as a fake comes, they're like, hey, this is a fake. Yes. Get this out of here. Get this yes. out of my face. Yes. Because I'm all, all I'm doing is a real deal. All I'm dealing with is the truth. So listen, when you're intimate with the Lord, 
and all you're dealing with is truth. Mm. All you're dealing with is the Holy Spirit. All you're dealing with Ooh. is the healer, the provider, and the deliverer. When you, all you're dealing it with is the Lord, he takes care of everything, and the devil tries to sneak into your into your life and tries to whisper in your ear, you're going to know, hey, get out of here because that's not of the Lord. I know of the Lord. I know about the Lord. I know what makes him makes him go. I know what makes him stop. I know what hinders the Holy Spirit. I know what pleases the Holy Spirit. I know everything. I'm not everything because we cannot find out everything about the Lord. But I know enough to know that that is a straight out lie. Mm, so my, 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 my conclusion is that you need to be intimate with the Lord, one. But also, two, I was on TikTok not too long ago. And now I'm just like, dude, like none of that, nothing just fills me except for reading the word on my spare time. Yeah. And so I'm kind of rolling through TikTok, trying to find someone preaching, you know, and I'm scrolling through and I see a tarot card reading. Mm. And this tarot card is like this it says, this means this. And I'm looking at you all, oh, heck no. And I swipe out and I told my wife, cause she was laying next to me. I go, babe, you saw this? You see, you see, I just saw a tarot card reading and I repented. I said, Lord, in Jesus name, get that thing out of my, I don't know what, I don't, because, because I don't know too, too much about it. All I know is that it opened doors, it opens doors and I'm, I'm out of it. I, I don't even want anything to do with it. So I said, Lord, I shut that door in Jesus name. No weapon formed against me will prosper. I pray in Jesus name. Your blood covers me. I went through the whole thing and, uh, and I said, Lord, like cover me. But imagine a child who is 10 years old, okay, who is 10 years old and flipping through TikTok and they see a tarot card reading and they're, and they're in. Yeah, they're, they're in. intrigued. They're watching. Yes. They're watching it. And so my, 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 uh, me and Sab are really, really big on this. We cut out a lot of things, uh, one of them being Disney because of their agenda and subliminal messaging that they have behind almost every single one of their cartoons. Mm -hmm. um so we cut out a lot of things and and so oh, but you're you're over exaggerating now brother it's Come disney on, uh, right, we grew up on disney it. man they'll, they'll call me they'll call me legalistic i could care less no you, you you're, you're just legalistic. overdoing it now my brother oh my lord no you, you, you don't even know you're protecting you know, that's what you're doing you're protecting but people <laughs> think people think that we met we, we over exaggerating when i yeah. when i I videotaped myself. No, no, I'm sorry. I, I screenshot it, canceled Disney Plus. And then mm -hmm. all my boys started videotaping and sending it, tagging me, tagging me, tagging me. And everybody, oh, you guys are just overdoing it, Disney, this. I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. I got a responsibility. Yeah. I got a job to protect these little ladies. Come on. And so there, it, it, if people... What it is, I think it is, is that people just don't want to admit that we might just be right. That, wow. it, that's it. That's it. Carry on. I, carry on. I also, I also believe that they don't want to get out of their comfort zone. Oh. And this is the same thing. This is the same thing that the Jews were doing in Acts. They were doing when Jesus was alive. That's why they crucified him. It's because the Jews were in their comfort zone. Mm. They were waiting for the Messiah. And they said, it's better for me to wait and obey this law. Because mm. demons live for the demons aren't mortal; they're immortal, meaning they live forever. So, so that same spirit of complacency says, "Well, you're just doing too much." Mm. Well, it's because, wait. Why are you saying it? Because you you watched Disney all your life. Because you watched this show all your life. Because you've done it all. This is the same thing that the Jews did. They learned about. They, dude, listen to this. They by the time they were ten years old, they they they, they memorized the first five books which is the Torah, this by 10 years old, they were already committing themselves to the Lord. They were already committing themselves to learning the law. So now the Messiah comes in and says, listen, what you read, it was about me. But what you're saying, you're, that's why it says their lips honored me, but the hearts were far from mm. me. Meaning that their heart wasn't in the right place. They weren't willing to come out of their comfort zone. They weren't willing to say, you are the Messiah and bow their knee. And because at the end of the day, every knee will bow and every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord. So I believe that, that the reason why they don't want to do this now, the reason why they don't want to cut out these Christians who still watch 
uh, these shows or they watch music or I believe two things is that they don't want to come out of their comfort zone and say, listen, because it's so easy. That's what their life is all about. Disney, Disneyland, Disney World, go home, watch Disney Plus, get the Disney Plus doll, get the Disney doll, get get uh, get uh, um, a Raya, get that, get all this stuff, get get everything Disney. But once you say Disney is not what it stands for, Disney is not what it used to be, and now it's just agenda, 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 now they go, wait, I've done this all my life. It's better for me to say you're doing too much than for me to throw out my whole, my whole thing. I've, I've invested too much. Yes, I've invested too much. Or two, they don't have any discernment. Mm. And, and, and I have friends, and I love them so much. But they watch Disney, and I could I could yell at them, but the Lord says I don't want you to yell at them <laughs> because they're going to come around. They're going to come around, and it's not our job to convict. It's not our job to say you need to stop doing this because this and that, blah blah. blah. But it is our job to shed light. One, yes, yes, and two, yes. To cast the seed because it talks about the seed, the sower. When he cast out the seed, he didn't just go, "Oh, I'm going to place one seed here." He cast the seed, meaning he had a, a whole thing of seed. And cast it, meaning let the chips fall where they may. The Holy Spirit's going to convict who he wants to convict. And the people who want to hear it are going to hear it. That's why it says, everyone who wants to hear, let them hear. Mm. Because all the people that the, the, all the all people that we're saying this to, they're not going to receive it. But let everyone who has an ear, let them hear. So, so I think that's what it is, is that people don't want to step out and say, Maybe this is this. Maybe it is. Maybe they are doing an agenda. But it's not just Disney. It's Holly, It's the Hollywood industry mm. in all. Another so. thing. Another thing is music, and um, mm. uh, you are a little. I think you might be a little qualified to speak on this. Just a little. <laughs> I know you used uh, to be a. He used to be a battle rapper, uh, underground hip hop uh, man, and so <laughs> yeah. Uh, 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 People don't realize the power of words, period. Mm. But when you are a Christian, you are a man of God and a woman of God. And preachers, we're preachers, me and you. We understand yep. the power in words, first of all. But we also understand how the enemy uses words. And so yes. we can go back to, you know, the, the, how, you know, before, uh, before Satan was kicked out of heaven, you know, blah, 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 blah. But anyway. I tell people like this, if there is no power in words, if there is no power in the music, then why when you listen to an R. Kelly, no, no, let's, not, let's not use R. Kelly, okay. Okay, come on. Oh key sweat. We listen to a key sweat. We want to make love to our girl. And then we want to listen to Tupac. We want to ride on somebody. Oh, my Lord. That is so true. And I tell people, so there is power in music. Music does affect the mind. It does move the heart. It affects the mood. It affects your emotions. Dude, I know guys that would go put in work. They put on Master P when they're selling dope. Wow. They, uh, uh, people, um, you know, ODs, they want to uh, they want to smoke weed, drink, and look at the chicks. They play a little bread and wood. You know what I'm saying? Low riding. They want to play some, you know, ODs. So your mood is kind of... It's created by that melody, by the music. Amen. That's why Come I tell on. people, and then they got the earbuds now, right? These kids are literally 24 hours a day with this music in their ears. Ears. And this mu and, and music has always been. I, I I we always say, oh, 90s music was the best. Yeah. The talent was great, but the message was still death. The wow. message was still death. Like the, the the message in hip hop hasn't changed. The talent comes and goes, but the message has always been death, 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 death. And so, talk to us a little bit about. I know you're on the worship team, so you mm. understand, you know, what words mean and maladies and and all that stuff. I'm trying to elaborate, and I I, I don't know much about. Talk to us a little bit about worship. And how music does affect and how we need to really, really watch uh, what we listen to. Come on. It says, let me pull this up, my Lord. It says in, oh, my Lord, Proverbs, I believe. Hold on. Proverbs, it says, 18, Proverbs 18, 20, it says, the, the tongue 
can bring death or life, mm. those who love to talk will reap the consequences. So we got to understand, we got to understand that the tongue is a very valuable thing, but mm. it can also destroy us. It can also, that's why it says in James, it says that the tongue is something that the human or the man cannot tame. Why is that? Because the, the out of the utterance of the mouth, the heart speaks. So whatever is mm. on your heart, it's going to come out of your mouth. Come on. So so, so if we're, this is what I'm going to say here. If we're, if we're talking about fornication, if we're talking about drunkenness, if we're talking about addiction, about drug addiction, if we're talking about selling dope, if we're talking about smoking weed, and then all of a sudden we're smoking weed and we're like, well, how am I smoking weed? It's because you are prophesying over yourself and you're declaring over yourself. This is so heavy. And a lot of people, that's why it says in Hosea 4, 6, it says, my people will perish due to lack of knowledge. They become ignorant and saying, well, I could still listen to Drake where it's talking about being in the club. It's talking about getting the woman and taking her back to my house. It's about, do you love me? Do you ride me? What do you think that means? What on earth do you think that means? It's prob you're prophesying over your life and you're declaring over your life saying, I'm okay with fornication, I'm okay with drunkenness, I'm okay with smoking weed, I'm okay with doing that. That's what you're saying yeah. as you are prophesying out of your mouth. Now, let's take a second and flip over the coin. Now, when you start singing hymns unto the Lord, and this is what I just preached about. Check it out, Firehouse Church YouTube. <laughs> I just preached about. Come on. What happens? When you start singing hymns mm. of the Lord, when you start singing psalms, because once you start singing psalms, all of a sudden your chains start breaking and doors are starting to be open, and now people's lives are being transformed. Mm. That's on. what happened with Paul and Silas. They said they said they were in chains and they were their their chains were like this and their feet were together like this. But what they should have done is they should have shut the mouths because when they were in there, they probably thought they were done. But but the, but what they did is they, they started lifting their voice and singing psalms Come of on. the Lord. They started singing hymns. And what happened? Their, their doors were all of a sudden open. This is what happened. that the, An earthquake happened. How quick is an earthquake? The quickest earthquake I've known is about like five, six seconds. Anything for you? Um, uh, yeah, about five, seven, five, seven, oh, five, five, five to six seconds, five, amen, seven amen. seconds. You got to understand this. When the earthquake was happening in seconds, their chains fell off. Ooh, in come seconds, on. These doors were open mm. in seconds, in seconds. Is that a, is that, is that, is that a, a, uh, a coincidence? That as soon as I started lifting my voice with a voice of triumph, as soon as I started clapping hands, all ye people, as soon as I started blowing the trumpet of Zion on my holy mountain, as soon as I started doing mm. these things, Come on. as soon as I started lifting my praise, all of a sudden my chains fall off. Nah, it's because you started prophesying to the dry bones. You started prophesying, said, even though I'm in chains, Paul and Silas said, even though I'm in chains, I'm still going to worship. This is what happens when you start singing Psalms of the Lord. This is what happens when, when life starts coming out of your tongue. This is what happens when you start speaking the truth of the Lord. Mm. This is what happens when you start being in unity and in intimacy with the Lord. What happens when you don't? What happens when you're declaring death over your life? The Lord can still redeem you. Mm, the Lord can on. still... Could, could still restore you he could still do all these things but don't don't ponder the question on why on earth am i fornicating why am i addicted per, to pornography why am i why am i looking at women this certain way why am i it's because you're listening to the music mm, it's because you are listening to the music that says it's okay to fornicate it's okay to drink it's okay to smoke it's okay to do all these things but that's why you are dealing with these things as a Christian, as a Christian. Yeah, we're not talking a, about unbelievers right now. No, we're, we're talking about not. we're talking about dibble dabblers, dibble dabblers. Oh my lord! And I only, I do not, we do not say this to condemn you. No, no, no. But no. I'm saying we're, this to expose, mm, come expose, on. and two is because I was that. Oh come on! I listened I to the we, drink. I think we was all that. 
Oh my lord! I listen to the Drake. I listen to the Trippy Red. I listen to even even when I start talking to my wife. And this was this was how the world has been radically changing us. Just like one thing after another. We used to listen to Trippy Red in the car when we first started talking, and then three weeks in, we said, "Hey, yo, Trippy Red ain't it. We gotta mm. dip it. We gotta dip because the Lord said I don't want you listening to that." Come on. And we go, okay. But the Lord said, the Lord said, I don't want you listening and associating yourself with that music if you call yourself a believer. Okay, check this oh, out. Let's let's pause there. Oh. There's fruit in everything we do, right? Yep. You see a tree, you know the tree by his fruit. So you're listening to the Trippy Red. You're listening to all this music. Just say, for yeah. instance, can you pinpoint when you? The uh, how things the atmosphere changed, the the blessings came, the uh, the doors closed, the no, new doors opened. Did you, can you sense a difference in your prayer life, in your reading of your word, and your relationship oh. from bringing that junk in your spirit and junk in your soul to not having that? Oh my lord, yes. I remember that again. I wasn't saved saved until. 2021 june june july 2021 and so i had my whole life again and it's, it goes back to the to the parenting my, my parents were beautiful parents they were awesome they were loving they had discipline they were just they had they equalized very very good very very well but i would still find myself listening to that music even though my parents say don't listen to that music and i didn't know why i was just a rebellious kid mm -hmm. and but they go don't listen to that music and I'm like, okay, like whatever. I would listen to Eminem, and if you know anything about Eminem, he's very the way he the way he raps. He's a good rapper. His lyrics fit very very nicely because I used to listen to him. But the meaning behind it, one and two, the way he speaks is very angrily. So I would find yes, myself yes, yes. sometimes getting a little upset. I would find myself being a little frustrated, but it was because what I was saying, and I would try. Oh my lord, I would try. When I was rapping, I would try to sound angry like him. Mm. I would try to act like he was acting. I, are you seeing what I'm saying here? I'm trying to be somebody that I'm not. And once you start doing this with your with your life and saying, I'm I'm gonna try to be this rapper, I'm gonna try to be that's when that's when the Lord says, That's not how I created you to be. Mm, come on. That's not how I did that. But when once I started taking out secular music. And my 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 friends would be like, oh, like, dude, you listen to like the Weekend's new album, you listen to Drake new album, you listen. I'm like, bro, I don't I don't listen to that stuff no more. And they go, what? Like, dude, you used, we used to go in the car, you know, like System of the Down. My buddy listened to System of the Down, and we rarely talk now, but he's so awesome. But he goes, bro, System of the Down, man, bro, I don't listen to that stuff, dude. Like that whole stuff's like all yours. Like I don't know what they're saying, dude. <laughs> you know, and and, and we, we we laugh about it, but. It's because I don't know. I don't know what they're saying, but but the, when I took that out, my my everything just started changing, yeah, and I felt yes. like it was overnight. Like I went the whole day without. I can't pinpoint. I can't tell you the day, but I do yeah, remember yeah, yeah. it was in June or July. But I remember taking it out, and then other than me and me and me and Sab, we were watching some. We were listening to Trippy Red like every once. But even three weeks after that, I was three weeks after that. We, the Lord said no, and we, we took it out. But before that, I was like, oh, dude, like this is day and night. All of a sudden, I had this boldness. All of a sudden, mm. I wanted to preach the gospel. All of a sudden, I, I felt so I felt so refreshed every time I came. And I came to church, I don't even know how many times from the time I was 12 all, all my life. But now all of a sudden, I come into church and I feel refreshed after service. All of a sudden, I'm worshiping during service. I'm leading worship. I'm doing all these things. I'm, I'm, I'm leading people to worship. And I feel like, oh my Lord, I could keep going. Yeah. I could keep singing about the Lord. I could be because it was a complete shift. There was, it was a, a there was that shift. hindrance there. Yes. And when when you made a conscious decision, like Lord, I don't want this. The Lord was able. Mm -hmm. Okay, now you ready? Now I can take you. Yes. Amen. Now I can take you to the next level. Ooh. So we talked about movies. We talked about music. Yep. Well, palm reading, tarot cards. The little Mexican bracelets. I know we're gonna get some people mad. Um, we're gonna get some, yeah. Uh, fortune telling, uh, uh, dr uh, dream catchers. Oh snap! Uh, Come on. Uh, I don't know if we should talk about yoga because everybody likes to wear yoga pants now. Oh my lord, we gotta talk about that. Okay, mm. yoga. 
Talk to me, bro, brother, on yoga. But yoga is just good stretching, bro. It makes me... I, I mean, I don't stretch. If I try to do yoga, I'll probably kill myself. I'll uh, start hyperventilating or something. But... Oh, Lord. I'll be like, oh, man. 911, man. 911. Yoga. <laughs> yoga is just... It, it's just exercise, bro. Don't trip. Oh, my Lord. For yoga, you got to understand. You got to... Oh, my gosh. Okay. So excuse me, you got to look into why are you doing those poses? Mm. You have to look into why are we, do, why, out of all the poses of just stretching down, you know, stretching your lower back, just stretching, why am I doing this downward dog? Why am I just, why am I doing this? I could just do this. Why am I, you got to look at the history. Yeah. You got to look at all that stuff. And I was watching, this is kind of not off subject, but, it goes hand in hand. I'm watching this movie called The Minions, right? I was talking to Brother David about Ooh, this. Talk, uh, talk about this one. Come on. So I'm watching this movie, Minions, and my buddy, he's going, oh, bro, it's a real good movie. I go, okay, for sure, you know, because I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm on fire for the Lord, and I'm like, okay, you know, like, I don't want to put anything in my body. I don't want to be seeing stuff that I don't want to see. I'm kind of just, like, cutting off the fat of my life. And so – my daughter wants to go see it, and I go, oh, okay. The trailer had nothing spiritual. The trailer had nothing about Zodiac, anything like that. And so my wife goes, hey, the trailer looks good. Let's watch it. And I go, no, that movie's demonic, kind of like messing around. And so we're laughing about it. I go, ah, whatever. Fourth of July, we end up going, seeing, going, going to go see it. We're watching it. First thing that kind of threw me for a loop was that they come out and they say, the Zodiac Stone, Zodiac Stone, we have to receive the power of the Zodiac Stone. And I go, hold up, hold, <laughs> hold up, time out, time out. What did he just, and so I look at my, my wife and I go, hey, what's up? What's this about? And she goes, oh no, like, like I, I think it's, it's, but she was feeling convicted too. Mm, she was come like, on, come on, come uh, on. Well, let's just keep watching, because obviously we paid for it. Yeah, yeah. So we're watching, we're watching, <laughs> and, uh, Movies just kind of like tiptoeing the whole time. The whole movie's tiptoeing around it the whole time. And so we're like, okay, like I'm trying to watch this. Like, okay, like I'm trying my best. Listen to what I'm about to say. I'm trying my best to just watch this movie. And I'm watching it, and it's about the vicious six and the number six in the Bible. It talks about the devil, the flesh, evilness. So I'm like, oh my Lord, Lord. Like, and it's the Lord showing me this stuff. I'm like, bro, like, Lord, like, what the heck's going on? And and the end of it, end of the movie, they end up in China, in Chinese New Year, and so what happens is that they all come together, grew and all these whatever. They all come together with the vicious six, or that they call themselves, and um, they come together. And uh, the only way that this the, the 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 zodiac power was released was on Chinese New Year. So it hit twelve o'clock, and they go, "Don't you know what time it is, Mama?" They hit this stone. I don't know how they hit it. I don't even remember. I just remember being upset. It, they hit the stone. These spirits, I'm not even going to say demons because people get all offended. But these spirits, because that's what they were, spirits go up in the air. They intertwine. They come back down and possess these people. And they were oh, possessed. But, okay, then they took form. They took control of these people. And all of a sudden, they're, they're, one's an ox. One's a rabbit. One's a snake. One's all this stuff. And I'm like, and I'm looking at this movie, and I look at my daughter, I go, hey, yo, what is that? And she goes, that's magic. I go, we do magic? She goes, we don't do magic. And I go, oh, Ooh, what? Cool. I gotta say this, okay? Because my now my job as a parent, I'm like, okay, she understands what magic is, right? So I'm like, okay, so why those animals? So I'm sitting there, I'm like, why those animals? I look up these animals, and Chinese, I look, all I, listen, this is all I look up. Chinese New Year, Chinese New Year Zodiac animals. Come to find out these are gods or idols that these Chinese people worship every every cycle of years. Mm. So one set of years, they'll, they'll worship the ox. One set of years, they'll worship the chicken. One set of years, they're going to worship the snake. And I'm like, oh, dog. And that's why it says in scripture, if you are not for me, you are against me. Mm. So if you are not worshiping me, who are you worshiping? You're worshiping the devil. Mm. So these are said to, I think it's safe to say demonic spirits that are infiltrating this, this movie. Definitely. So, definitely. It's so, it's so crazy because coincidentally, 
my my wife goes to the restroom when all this happens. So she comes back and she thinks I'm kind of like tripping. Like she kind of like you're like what the heck? Like you're just saying I go no, nah, dude. Like this is what happened. And so she comes back and I find that stuff out. But you need to be doing research on what on earth I'm doing now. Coming back to yoga, why am I doing this downward dog that looks like I'm? Uh, it looks like if you do a downward dog, it looks like you're worshiping something. Mm. Oh my lord. You ain't ready for this, dog. You ain't ready for this. When you're doing downward dog, you look like you're worshiping something. Come on. And when if you look at the roots of yoga, it's all demonic. It's all po- certain poses in order for you to worship demonic forces and all this stuff. Listen, you can stretch without yoga. You can stretch without doing downward dog. You can stretch without doing the leaping frog. You can you can stretch without doing the 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 leaping frog. I don't even know. I'm trying to like the twister wizard or something. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But you can stretch without doing these so called yoga poses. So I, I I don't know why people are saying oh like like it's okay to do all this stuff. This is an open door for the enemy. I know people mm-hmm. are saying it's just exercise. It's just this. This is an open door, a gateway. I might even say gateway. For, for the devil to say, hey, I'm in there. You you did. I don't know you weren't you weren't paying attention. I don't know you are you because the devil don't even play fair. Mm. He goes, no, you weren't even paying attention. Even though you didn't do your research, I still slipped in. Mm. Even though you were downward dog and, and doing like <laughs> a, like demonic worshiping poses, I still slipped in. I don't even care. He don't even care. He's not even playing fair with you. So why on earth are you playing fair with him saying, oh, I, I didn't even see. Come I on. didn't even realize. I didn't even see. I don't, I don't even know what's going on here. But the, the, the devil said, I don't even care. So if you're playing fair with the devil, the devil ain't playing fair with you. So man. check this out. I know you I know you, you can give me a good, uh, you can give me some good on this. Every person is created to worship. Right? Mm, come on. Yep, in Psalms, come on. We are designed to worship, so we will worship something. Oh, that's so good. And so our we're just naturally open to worship. And you're yeah. saying that when we do some of these things, we're worshiping, and we're yeah. not realizing that we're worshiping. And so, you know, the yoga, and we got the, the tarot cards, we got the dream catchers, um, we got the bracelets, we got the... The palm reading, uh, we got the, we got all these things, and because oh. people don't know, they're mm-hmm. they're they're letting it, they're 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 letting it in, and so yes. you're telling me tonight that we need to be more attentive, we need yes. to use discernment, and um, mm-hmm. and I, really at the end of the day when we start calling these things out, like you said earlier. People are not going to be like, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Man, I'm glad you yeah. told me that because you're attacking who they are. You're attacking yes. them because they've invested. And because, you know, let's just be honest, like in the Hispanic culture, there's a yeah, lot of a things lot. in Hispanic culture that are tradition and people do it. You know, the uh, the, the bracelets, the prayers, the just just crazy things. And um yeah. And you know, people don't realize why there there there's sickness in the home, there's chaos in the home. Mm-hmm. They they seem to uh, always be. Uh, it, 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 they just don't seem to get a, a break in certain areas. It's because, like mm-hmm. you said, we give the devil that foothold, and he comes in and he just rampage. Yeah. Amen. So you know, we talked about a lot of things tonight. Uh, we talked about your testimony and how you. You 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 were uh, living uh, I, I would say a double life you could say yeah and in living a double yep. life in any shape or form we open doors yeah you know you got men of God and we're and, and we're not and we're not talking about unbelievers because they mm-hmm. get a pass because they're ignorant we're talking about yep. believers who know I want to well, maybe they don't know I don't know. Or being told, hey, don't do that, man. Don't play with that. Don't mess with that. Yeah. Uh, if you play with fire, you're eventually going to get burned. If yeah. you knock and, enough... And wanna... Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, I want to say this, because you were talking about it earlier, that we are literally programmed to worship. Mm. And I want to say this, and I want to say this, because, because a lot of people kind of like forget, and there's two things I want to say. 
Talk about that it. when 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 Lucifer cat was cast down, he didn't lose any of his angelic being. Okay. Let me say that yes, again. Yes, yes. When he was cast down, he did not lose any of his angelic being. Nor does it say in the word that he lost his angelic being. It doesn't say that anywhere. Yes. But all it says it was he was cast down, and I saw Satan fall like lightning. That's what it says. It. Now listen, he is going to use the same musical ability that he mm. had in the heaven. He's going to use that same ability to try to capture you. He's going to use that same ability to, to try to captivate you. Now listen, when when this is what we we fall in, okay? Because by the time Adam and Eve were already formed, Satan was already on the earth because it says that the serpent came in later, right? Mm. So listen, when Lucifer was cast in, we were literally, listen to this, we were created to worship, right? So when Lucifer was left, they left an open slot of worship. Listen, they were already, he was already being worshipped by the seraphim. He was already being worshipped by the other angels. But I'm talking about somebody leading worship. Lucifer is gone. Who's going to fill the void? And look who was made to worship. Us. So the church is literally programmed to worship. We're made to fill the void that Lucifer left. Mm. You catch what I'm saying here? You catch what I'm saying here? Now, Ooh, now, on. we are here. We are here. And we are worshiping God willfully. You don't think the enemy going to try to slide in and say, you are taking my job that I used to have. Even, even now. Even now, I think about like like people who get fired, and they go and they call up old employees and go, "Hey, hey, who's taking my job? Hey, who who? Hey, ain't nobody doing like me, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'll be cooking up those burgers. I'll be doing this. I'll be working hard on. Ain't nobody doing like they try to replace me, but ain't nobody try try to replace me. Ain't nobody gonna replace me. We do that as human beings. Imagine Lucifer. We're worshiping the Lord now. Mm. We're worshiping the Lord out of out of choice because we want to worship Him. You don't think the Lucifer is gonna get mad? You don't think Lucifer is, is? You think Lucifer is just gonna stand by and say, "Oh yeah, you could do my old job," but instead he's gonna pursue you. That's mm. why it says in Revelation, it says that Lucifer was waiting for the woman to give birth, but because the woman was because. Lucifer became so upset with God and the woman, he became he went to the earth and became pursuing and persuading and persecuting his other children. Mm. Meaning, we're the children of the woman. The woman is called Israel, right? Israel is the woman. There's a lot of uh, symbolism in Revelation. But in Revelation, there's this woman that's about to give birth, which is Jesus, that's about to give birth, birth, birth to but what what happens is that we're children of God, right? So since we're children of God, we're the children of Israel. Who's Israel in Revelation? The woman. Mm. So who does who does the devil wage war on? The rest of her children. Who's the children? Us. Mm. So meaning the believers in Christ, meaning that you are on a constant battle with the enemy. So don't think that that just because I listen to music or just because I do this, the devil's trying to slip in, man. He's mm. trying to get you, he's trying to hold you by the ankle, and he's trying to whip, rip you away. But I say that because Lucifer, he did not lose any of his being. He didn't lose any of his persuasiveness. He pers oh my lord, he persuaded one third of the angels. What makes you think he can't persuade you? Oh, oh my lord! Hey, you know one of my he one of my questions to a, a lot of people is like. Hollywood has portrayed what a demon looks like, what the devil looks like. Yeah. And I tell people, nowhere in scripture do I see that he lost even his beauty. Yeah. Like he, he, you know, like, so what we need to do and what we're doing tonight is we're identifying what, what the, we're, we're, we're exposing the wiles of the enemy, the tactics, the schemes, mm. yeah. the way he moves, you know, and how he uses things to, to bring sickness and and um one of the things I tell uh, uh, as we kind of come to a landing is we have identified some things mm. we've come exposed on. the enemy tonight and so what needs to happen is we what uh, what, what what people don't want to do anymore is they want everyone wants to sit at the cool kid table yeah and everybody doesn't want to hurt feelings and nobody wants to say anything me and my wife have learned this in the last few years. You know what? We're going to lose some. We're going to gain some. We're gonna, uh, we, yeah. we, we, we may not get invited to Christmas again. That's okay. It'd be cheaper for me, though. 
I don't go to your Christmas party. And Whoa. we're going to stand for what is right, what is godly. And even with other Christians, we might lose some relationships. We might offend some people. Yeah. But I know at the end of the day, I want to offend man before God. Yeah. And I know That's... that I tell my kids every day that we are called to be different. We are called not, yeah. we're not to conform. And so it's so easy in this day to say, oh, no big deal. No big deal. Yeah. Oh, that's that. That's okay. But I tell my kids, I said, no, mama, we have to stand for, 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 for God. And if we can't do this and do that, that's okay. Hey, well, mm. what about having fun? We can have fun other ways. I, I, I don't know about you, but I've woken up with some Holy Ghost hangovers before. You know what I'm saying? Come on. I've had some Come of the on. best times in my life, brother, in the church. Yeah. Worshiping, listening to a good preaching, being at a at a men's gathering, at a, at a conferences, and so as we wind down a little bit, we talked about open doors, demonic activity, witchcraft. We have identified, you know, um, we've. Uh, I think as men, we have to really take an account for what we, maybe what mm -hmm. we don't let our kids watch, but we're watching. We we want to mm -hmm. identify that, and and um, there is alternatives, you know, like. There is good music yeah. out there. There is good movies out there. There's good things to do. There's there's places you can still take your kids to. Like we're not saying cut it all loose. You can't go yeah. nowhere. You can't do nothing. Turn the TV off. Turn the radio off. Stay inside. Eat beans and rice. Yeah. But we're saying be more sensitive. Be attentive. Yes. Ask God for discernment. When you see something, yes. don't. Uh, it's okay. No, 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 no. Okay. Because what you're saying is, in that movie, one little thing led to another little thing that led to another little thing. And so yeah. we're responsible for our children, man. And that's huge. And so we got to be yeah. on it. We got to be on it. Because we do, this is, what, this is what people don't understand. We don't battle against flesh and blood. Come on. We battle those things we can't see that are in the spirit. But yeah. if... How are we going to battle something and we inviting it in? Wow. So we can't yeah. be inviting stuff in. We can't be inviting mm -hmm. things into our lives. Uh, you know, like, we got enough problems trying to, trying to, trying to put gas in my car. Come on, bro. I got enough uh, uh, challenges to, to not knock somebody out at work. And then I'm going to go home and just tell the devil, come on in and then just finish me off. So come on. Amen. So as we come to a close, because, you know, he's Pentecostal, so we always close 10 times. Oh, my Lord. Talk to us. Give come us on. a little uh, 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 just uh, some on. final words. So, you know, come give on. us that that not that 12 I, round knockout. Some on your heart, so brother. Some you want to say something that's been per uh, uh, sizzling in your spirit. If you had one last message, one last sermon. I, I, who would it be? I, so it, it's it's. I want to tell you guys because mm. we have like I think we had like six topics or we had six topics. We went through like three of them, but we have so much. You know what I mean? And we're gonna get this. We're gonna get part two going, mm. but we're gonna get our wives in it, and it's gonna be oh my lord. Mm. But but it's gonna be amazing because they're just huh? They're just they're the ones that keep her. She be keeping me in check, but don't tell nobody. <laughs> and so and so, but. Astrology, tarot cards, palm reading, re reading, as well as a Ouija boards. Ooh. Those are it, those are all gateways. Because listen, when you when you go to a palm reader, you go to tarot cards, you go to all that stuff. This is what's happening. Okay, are you ready for this? This is what the Lord revealed to me. Is that is that when you go see a tarot card reader, when you go see a palm reader. When you go mess with the Norwegian board, they all have something in common, the demonic activity. Mm. So listen, when you go see a palm reader and you go, yeah, re read my palm, they are not looking at your palm. Oh, my Lord. Mm. What they are doing is they are communicating with the demon that has been following you and has been trying to get at you. So when, when, you, when you're reading, when they're reading your palm, they're listening to the demon and the demon saying that their grandpa, listen, they use emotions. And they say their grandpa died last week. Familiar spirit. So the Paul says yes. your grandpa died last week. 
Mm. Of course the demon's gonna know that. The, of course the, the demon's looking at you, waiting. That's why it says it says the enemy looks around and, and he's like a lion waiting, seeking who he's gonna devour. So so when you're listening to this poem reading, the poem reader isn't even listening to you. He's not caring. All he do is that demon saying, He, oh my god, I feel the 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 people getting upset right now. But but I th that's what they're listening. They're listening to the demon. Your grandpa died last week. You wanted to kill yourself. You were hanging off the cliff, and all of a sudden, you're like, oh, my Lord. Like, yeah, yes, what they're saying is true. Now, the only difference between a palm reader or a, a palm reader and a, and a prophetic anointing mm, is on. that where you get your source. Where you get your source. Because once you get start getting stories from demonic forces, you are now considered a witch. Oh, my Lord. But once you start listening to what the Lord has to say, you are now walking in the prophetic anointing okay so anything that is that you're listening to palm reading tarot cards witchcraft a ouija board a ouija board is big now they have a, a my my wife because we we're watching stranger we we're trying we were trying to watch stranger things we didn't even get through season one we're watching stranger things and, we, and i go look there's an ouija board on the wall and so we're talking about it and we end up putting the the show away after like the third episode because we're trying to force it and, and the lord said i don't want you watching that my wife looks up because she made a post and she goes stranger things a ouija board wall me she was mm. just trying to find uh, uh she was just trying to find the wall picture they have actual ouija boards from stranger things and they made it a theme and all of a sudden like little kids play it and i'm like oh my lord but what's happening is that the demonic the demonic are they're overstepping their hand they're overplaying their hand and one the lord's going to come back that's why it says he, the, that the lord's coming back for his bride without spot wrinkle or blemish we have to be holy like the lord is holy we have to understand that but these are all open doors these are all literally gateways for the enemy to say i'm in that's all i needed i just needed you to be a little curious Go to Toys R Us and get in a Ouija board and mm. come back home and find out what's going on. That's all I needed to do. I just needed you to watch that movie of fornication. I just wanted you to watch that scene of fornication. And now you're thinking about fornication. Now three weeks down the line, now you're fornicating. Now you're doing you're 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 an adultery. That's why I said mm. you're you're in adultery. That's why it says in Proverbs, it says, "Do not listen to the adulteress," because she, uh, some some translations say, "Do not listen to the harlot," meaning do not listen mm. to the things of the enemy, the one that tries to entice you. Who wrote that? Solomon. Solomon wrote that that had over seven hundred concubines and wives put together. The man that understood all this, though, that's the one who was saying, "Don't listen to the harlot," because once once. Once she entices you, it's it's game over. Mm. So so that's that's I kind of grouped them all up. They're all like kind of like a few points, yeah. but I grouped them all up because this is all the same activity that, that Lucifer and Satan is trying to do, trying to get you to buy that Ouija board. Say, oh, it's not that bad. I'm covered by the blood. That's the number one excuse of Christians saying I'm covered by the blood. Even if the demonic wanted to come in and try to take me, I'm covered by the blood. But listen, listen, listen. The Lord gives you free will and gives you free will and he honors it so much. So much so he'll let you go through the valley and let you just suffer. That's why it says in Deuteronomy 8, it says, I will let you hunger and I let you starve, but yet you still your sandals were still able to be worn. But listen, you the Lord will, will probably, maybe, maybe, maybe he'll deliver you, maybe. But listen, he honors your free will so much mm. that he'll let you go into the demonic realm. He'll honor, he'll honor your free will so much saying, if you want to do this, then do this. That's why it says in the word, it says, it says the Holy Spirit, it can be grieved. Grieve so much. How you grieve the Holy Spirit? By doing not by doing uh, 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 opposite of what he says. By not listening to the Lord. So much so that the Holy Spirit leaves you. The Holy Spirit leaves you. And so he'll let you go through there. He'll let you go through there. But listen, you know who else respects free will? The devil. Because mm. why? That's how God created it. So the devil will say, okay, you want to do this? You want to do that? He'll go. He'll go. He'll do it. He'll, he'll let you. He'll let you. He'll let you. But listen, once you start going into that, the Lord says, 
I don't have you. You're not giving me any right here. You're not giving me any jurisdiction. Now, listen, the Lord can, can just the Lord can just do this. Get out of here and just pluck you. He can do that. But if you are sinning willfully, oh, my Lord, that's why I just said it in the beginning, because I want to put a disclaimer out there that if you go on sinning willfully, I'll say it's on blue in the face that this that the sacrifice no longer covers your sin. What sacrifice? The sacrifice of Jesus. So if you go in there and you're doing all this stuff and you get demons attached to you, demons are now on you, demons are now falling, you're in your bed and now all of a sudden you get lucid dreams, all of a sudden you have sleep paralysis and you can't get out. Now you got this demon on you, choking you. I got friends. I was actually my, it was my, the woman that I was actually committing fornication with, her sister had demons choking her at night and I go, what she literally saw figures in her closet moving and i go what and she was on the worship team she was doing the things of the lord and but what gave the legal right what gave because it's mm. all just want to get into that stuff because that's just a whole thing i'm willing to get into that's part two really that's part two it's <laughs> right now part two part two coming out soon and so what happens is that you give the enemy jurisdiction over mm. your life saying that because you did the Ouija board, because you did the palm reading, because you did the tarot card, because you started listening to astrology, Ooh, because you started man, you to trust in something else on. that's not of the Lord. Mm. Now all of a sudden Come the on. devil has jurisdiction over your life. And now mm. you're wondering why on earth is my life falling apart? It's because you gave the, the devil entryway mm. and jurisdiction. And now he's cre he's just... Because that's what it says. It says he's come to steal, kill, and destroy. Now, all of a sudden, your job is torn from you. All of a sudden, now things are just falling out of you. Like, like that's, why, that's why things are just being stolen from you because he came to steal. That's why things are falling dead in your life. All of a sudden, mm. you had a fire for worship. All of a sudden, you had a fire for the Lord. Mm. All of a sudden, you had a fire. You had a fire for all these things, the work of the Lord. Now, the enemy, since you gave him jurisdiction, he is now killing your fire. He is mm. now putting out your fire. And now, you're wondering, why on earth don't I have that fire anymore? It's because you gave jurisdiction to the enemy because he come to steal kill and destroy now you're wondering why your marriage is destroyed now you're wondering why your relationship is being destroyed now you're wondering why all these things are being destroyed it's because you gave the devil jurisdiction through astrology tarot cards palm reading and a ouija board that you're giving the enemy jurisdiction and a lot of people are not understanding that's why it says no i'll keep quoting Oh my Lord, I'm spinning out here. I'll keep quoting. I'll keep quoting the same scriptures because that's what I stand on. Amen. I stand on the rock. I stand on Jesus. I don't stand on sand. I don't stand on hay. What I stand on is the solid rock. And the word says, my people will perish. Not just like all of a sudden you perish. But what he's saying is that my people will go to hell. Oh my Lord. Oh. My people will go to hell due to lack of of knowledge due to the ignorance due to them not doing research due to them getting the ouija board at toys r us due to them opening gates and letting the enemy ruin their life and just sitting in victimization and not calling upon the name of the lord to redeem me those people the people who are going to hell because of lack of knowledge mm. come on and so on. and so this stuff listen don't just keep saying i'm covered by the, by, by the blood don't keep saying that don't keep that's why it says in the words is pride comes before the fall that's why paul wrote he goes he goes don't say don't say oh my lord he says don't say i'm not i'm without sin don't say oh i'm good this day don't say this because surely it will catch up to you mm. surely it will be fallen sure because that's what it says in romans it's all have fallen short of the glory of god Meaning, oh my Lord, I could be preaching like this all day. Come on, amen. Meaning, meaning, meaning what? Meaning you're going to fall short, but when you keep doing it over and over and over, that's why it says in Matthew, many will come to me saying, didn't we prophesy? Didn't we heal in your name? Didn't we do all these things? And he goes, depart from me. I never knew you. And a lot of people just stop it there. They stop the scripture there. Mm. But what does the rest of the scripture say? It says, you worker of lawlessness. 
you worker of other translations say you worker of iniquity mm. meaning you are working continuously you knew that you were prophesying in vain you knew that you were healing in vain you knew you were doing all these things for yourself for your own glory you knew you're doing but still you did it you did it fall back on me still mm. you didn't call upon the name of the lord still you didn't give me the glory because my glory is not to be shown and given and shared with anybody but myself that's what he's saying god is saying right now he's saying that the glory is not to be shared the glory is only for me meaning jesus and god the glory is only for me what did i he says he says right now what did i do to king herod i killed him because he didn't share the glory he didn't give me the glory in acts he says he says that the glory is only for me and me alone, and this generation is lost, and I want to bring them back to my glory. I want to bring them back to repentance, but the, the, but because they are ignorant, because they do not listen to me, because they have lack of knowledge, I am going to make them perish because they do not want to fall on me, because they do not want to repent, because they do not want to give me the glory that rightfully belongs to me. The mm. glory does not belong to anybody but the lord come on prophesy right now hallelujah amen he wants to say he wants to say that the, that the glory just belongs to him not to anybody else and our god is a jealous god and he wants what rightfully rightfully belongs to him and there's going to be a lot of people in heaven that we didn't expect to be there but there's going to be a lot of people that we expect to be in heaven but aren't there in the first place because their heart was far from they honor them they, they, they honor them with their lips, but their hearts were far from me. Amen. Oh, Amen. Yeah. Oh, uh, glory to God. When we, think oh, of, when, we, when we think about God's glory, we think about glorifying Him in all we do. Mm -hmm. And so a man and a woman who lives to glorify God doesn't dabble, doesn't mess with these things because mm -hmm. they value that intimacy. You know, one yes. of the, I tell people... You know what the, the worst thing is? Is the spirit leaving you. His peace leaving oh, wow. you. His joy yes. leaving you. When you're, you come to a place where you're like, man, no conviction anymore. Oh, my Lord. No, no clarity, no peace of mind. No, no, no joy. And so, amen. What a good time in the Lord. What a, uh, oh, an amazing Lord. time. We exposed the devil. We, we, oh, we encouraged. God. We provoked. We, uh, we, we laid it all on the table and said, look, this is what it is. There's no confusion after tonight. There's Come no on. confusion. You want to play, you're going to pay. Come you want to play, you're going to pay. But, we want, but, but the desire, I believe, for both of us is to see men and women set free from this stuff. Yes. Family set free. Children set yeah. free. You know, uh, people walking in the fullness, walking in, in victory and peace able to worship without burden and, and, and heaviness because when the enemy is wrapping in your home, man, you don't want to yes. come home. I tell people I've come home before and, and I could sense that I feel like that de the devil's there and he's there, man. And there's, and so I, let's, let's take inventory tonight. Yeah. What doors have we opened? Yeah. A time for repentance tonight. A oh, time, you know what, Lord? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. We I thank you, Lord, for your word. Ooh, we thank you, Lord, for your word that exposes the enemy. Lord, I ask you to, Father God, that if there's anyone listening tonight, that, Father God, we would repent, Father God, first of all. Repent for the things that we've allowed to come into our lives. The TV shows, the, the movies, the music. The gossiping, the murmuring, the complaining, knowing right from wrong and still doing wrong, Father God. Oh, my Lord. I pray, Lord, that there be a conviction like never before yes. in your people, Lord. That we yes. would be convicted, Lord. And not the first, not the third time, not the fifth time, not the seventh time, but the first time. That we would honor you, Lord, in our actions. That we would value our intimacy with you above it all. That we would in mind... We wouldn't mind, Father God, looking crazy. We yes. wouldn't mind being the oddball. We wouldn't mind uh, not sitting at the cool kid table, Lord. But we oh, would Lord. value 
that we have to honor you, that we would honor you, Lord, in our, in our dealings, and our comings and our goings, that we would value where we put our money, where we put our finances in, Lord. I, Lord, and you would give us boldness to stand for what is righteous, Lord. And when we see something, that we would call it out yes, in such Lord. a way, Lord, that we honor you, not be, not being, uh, not not being like. I don't know, Lord. Like we don't want to be obnoxious about it, Lord, but we want to yeah, be. Lord. We want to do it with such, with 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 love, Father God, and and patience and long suffering. Yes, I thank God. you, Lord, for my brother Obi right now, Lord. I thank yeah. you for the word he brought tonight, Lord. And we, as we expose the enemy, that people would be encouraged tonight, that people would take inventory tonight, and that people would be set free in Jesus' name, Lord. We ask, <clears throat> we ask you right now, Lord. That you will set people free. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Yes, and we give Lord. you all the honor and all the glory. Woo! Show this, show this, show it. Come on. My God. God. I think I think we're getting ready to close this out, but we're gonna get a part two. We get it's we bring in a Sabs in, we bring in Gina May in. Abby might run through. Who knows? Come we don't on. know. But hey man, I want to tell you, man, I love you. I appreciate you. I thank you for coming. And I sharing which what God put on your heart. I know that I was blessed, and I know many people will be blessed by this man. I know. Come on, it's awesome. And 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 uh, ex enemy exposed is the enemy defeated. Ooh, come on. So I, that was the main when I when I put this sermon together. The main goal was just to just to open up the sheet on him Ooh. and see hey, this, this is not it. And so when he said, we're going to do this again on the podcast, I go, they beautiful. This is just another opportunity for, for mm -hmm. us to expose that enemy because he's disgusting. He's wicked. He's honestly, I've heard, I heard pastors say this, and I don't mean it in a disrespective way towards the devil because we have to understand that the devil, he's wicked and he has some power. That's why he says he's, he's, a, he's the prince of the power of the air, meaning that he has some power. He has some dominion, but he's a loser. Woo! He's a loser. And he's thrown into the lake of fire. Come on. He's done. He's done. And he understands. He understands that his end time is the book is closing. Mm. The, the trumpet is at the lip of the angel. It's 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 going. And so so uh um so I'm sorry, someone just texted me, but um but we but enemy understands that 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 the end times are closing, the book's closing, the trumpets mm. are delivered, the angel, and he's trying to pull everybody. He's trying to pull uh, anybody that they, he can to drag them to hell, and he's going to do. He's going to be attacking the Christian. He's going to be attacking every Christian because because the unbeliever he, he the unbeliever he doesn't even need to work on them. He, he got already like, he got far him. gone. Oh, it's good. Let's cake work. I just throw some lust their way and they're they're good. <laughs> I just gotta throw this their way that way. And then the Buddhists, the, all these people, I, uh, they that's false. That's all false religion. Why is it that as soon as I open up my mouth about Jesus, all of a sudden everybody got a problem? It's because there's power in the name of Jesus. They get offended. You can say the most ratchet stuff, but don't say Jesus. Come on. <laughs> so so, but but the enemy is trying his best right now. I truly believe. The enemy's trying his best, dragging people to hell, trying trying his best. But I hate to break it to you, but right now, right here, the, the remnant is rising. The revelation, the revival is rising right now. Are you going to be a part of it or are you going to fall victimized to the enemy? Mm. Come on. Amen. Well, as we always do uh, at this time, you ain't got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Hey amen. Man, thank you again for coming through. Thank you for sharing your, that awesome word. And amen to part two. Come on, part two. We're going to talk about jurisdiction. We're going to talk about legislation. Ooh. We're going to talk. I know we got some crazy, amazing stuff. Um, talking about rights. We're talking about dominion. We're talking about principalities. We're talking about it's depth and depth. I know we get me and Sag got a lot. I know you got some stuff as well. Mm. A lot of stuff. So I'm. We're, it's this is this is it, man. We we're we're saying, devil, you don't have any right here. On, you don't have any dominion here. We're about to unveil. So I'm I'm. I was really excited. Uh, really awesome, awesome opportunity. And so this is gonna be good. I can't wait for it to come out. And I'm gonna start spamming everybody. And so uh, yeah, I'm really excited. Come on. Hey, Amen. Thank you very much, brother, for coming through. God bless you, man. Love you, man.
Love you too, my man. Hey. Come on. Hey, hey. Amen, amen, amen. Another amazing time on the AV podcast with my brother Obadiah. They call him Obi, a, a, a young brother who's on fire for God. He was a worship leader, he's a teacher, he's a preacher, he's an evangelist. And uh, when I first heard this sermon about open doors, it really uh, had me do some inventory. And even though, you know, like at times we think that certain things is not a big deal, but the enemy uses those little things and he uses those little things to come in and cause chaos and confusion. And he, the Bible says he comes to kill, steal, and destroy, you know. And uh, one of the things I tell people, the greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing people he didn't exist. And we know that the devil exists. We know he's real. We know he has an agenda. But be encouraged today that God is for you who could be against you. That no weapon formed against us shall prosper. But in doing this, remember this. Today, you know what's best for you. Oh, here we go. He's trying to call me on the phone. Amen. But remember tonight that you heard it first on the AV podcast. Open doors, Ouija boards, tarot cards, palm readings, dream catchers, yoga, music, movies. We got to be very careful on what we touch, very careful on what we invite into our lives because your soul depends on it. It's life and death. So if you're a parent out there, continue to monitor what your kids are watching. Continue to monitor what you're watching. And let us give God glory and everything we do. Just want to let everybody know on the AV podcast, we do two things. We give God glory and we tell stories. And tonight, we had a great time. Can't wait to uh, t- part two with the wives. God bless. Have a wonderful night. Cuckoo, cuckoo. Cuckoo. <laughs>